So I've been shooting videos from this studio more or less for the last eight months, ever since we moved into this new house, which is crazy how fast that went by. And since then I've taken a couple steps to help the echo situation in this room. You can see I've got some acoustic foam panels on this wall, as well as this wall quite heavily. And then the other walls, not so much. Like this is pretty blank, apart from all the crap that's you know, uh, shoved aside here. And then also this wall, it does have some base traps, but apart from that, it's just a desk setup, nothing, nothing fancy. And of course the ceiling is completely bare as well. And as you can probably tell, there's still quite a bit of echo in this room because of all those untreated areas. So today I'm gonna try to actually DIY my own acoustic panels. And the reason why I wanna DIY them not just because it's gonna make for some slightly interesting content perhaps, but rather I keep finding that there are two main types of groups of acoustic panels you can find online, at least in my experience. You can either go with the really basic cheap stuff, which is like a cheap foam material. It's very inexpensive, which is why a lot of people use them. However, I found that they're kind of a pain to work with when mounting to the wall, there's no perfect solution. I'm using some cardboard behind each of these uh, square foot panels along with some command strips. And you can see that uh, there's there's some gaps here, right? These these gaps weren't here when I first mounted the, the panels to the wall, but over time the command strips have maybe shifted or the glue's kind of weakened or something like that. And now it just kind of looks like a crappy mosaic. So on a quick side note here, I am planning to build uh, some wooden frames around each of these panels to bring the panels closer together to make them look more flush so they actually look like single panels, but that's going to be for another day. And then the other type of acoustic panels that I keep finding online are the really expensive ones, like hundreds of dollars for a single set of a few panels that doesn't even take up that much space or that much surface area. And these seem to be really nice, good quality panels that seem to do a good job based on the reviews that I keep reading, but they're not cheap. So it's kind of frustrating that the only two types of acoustic panels I can find online are the really cheap ones or the really expensive ones, which brings us to today's project. Now I know I just ranted and whined about the really expensive panels, but truth be told, I actually caved and pulled the trigger on, on six of them uh, that I am gonna be putting against this wall underneath the, the window here. And that's just mainly because I wanna check them out just to see if, if they're actually worth it. Maybe I'll do some sort of before and after test with those on a later date because they're not here yet. But for six panels, that set was like 220 bucks or something like that. And so in an effort to avoid having to spend much more money on sound treating this room, I'm gonna try my hand at building a couple panels today to see how it goes. Treating the ceiling makes a lot of sense because it's the most bare surface in the room. It's creating a lot of echo at the moment. However, this wall is very important too, which is why I bought those acoustic panels for it, mainly because it's the wall that I'm actually facing when I record most of my videos. The floor, there's not a whole lot I can do with the floor. Obviously it's echoey because it's not carpet, but I don't want to throw a rug down because that would be a total nightmare when working with a camera on a tripod. I've done that before, not doing it again. But the ceiling is fair game, so that's what we're going to be working on today. Uh, but I have none of the materials on me right now, so let's go to the hardware store. This video is sponsored by the Corsair Virtuoso RGB wireless headset. Experience high fidelity audio from a pair of 50 millimeter neodymium drivers that deliver immersive 7.1 surround sound. A detachable high bandwidth microphone provides exceptional clarity, while the combination of memory foam ear pads and a lightweight headband offers long lasting comfort for hours on end. For more info on the Corsair Virtuoso RGB, click on the link in the description below. So we've got all the materials back home. That took a while because we were trying to figure out some things while we were at the uh, the hardware store. Let me just go down the list really quick. We have our wood to actually build the frames themselves. We have four four foot pieces and four 21 inch long pieces. 21 inches because uh, these shorter pieces will actually be mounted in between the four foot planks, which I'll measure uh, 1.5 inches thick. And so that would be three inches when you total up both sides, which would give you two feet exactly. So two feet, it's still gonna be two feet by four feet when all is said and done. This is actually a really nice wood. It doesn't have any moisture left in it, so it's completely dry. It's not gonna shrink or twist or anything like that. But it looks pretty nice too. Obviously we could sand it if we wanted to, but this is gonna be completely covered up by uh, the fabric later on. So no need to actually modify the way it looks. Obviously we need to mount these pieces together. So we're gonna use some wood screws. I've got 16 wood screws, two for each corner of our panels. And then I've got some right angle brackets. Now, the first hardware store we went to only had uh, two of these left, so I actually had to go to another store to pick up two more sets, but then I forgot which size I needed, so they're actually two different sizes, but hopefully that doesn't matter much. Uh, we also have some D-hooks, so these are D-hooks, this is what a D-hook looks like. We're going to have one of these on each corner of our panels, and this is what's going to be our... Uh, I guess our mounting mechanism to the ceiling with these hooks. Eight of these hooks are gonna go into the ceiling and then they will latch on 
or I should say the D hooks will latch onto them like so. Uh, obviously it'll look different when it's all done. You get the idea. Now I'm making damn well sure that all of these hooks are going into studs in the ceiling. We don't want to put this in drywall. That will not be good. It will not hold it. It'll all fall, come crumbling down and probably kill me. Uh, so I did locate the studs. They're 16 inches apart in this house. Pretty standard stuff. I also purchased insulation. That's actually going to be serving as the sound absorption material that we're going to be putting inside of these panels. It's got an R15 rating. It's thermally and acoustically treated, but perhaps most importantly, it's going to fit inside of our panels because uh, the material itself is is three and a half inches thick, which is the same uh, depth as our panels when all said and done. There were some other options at the store that looked pretty decent, but they were all way too thick for this project. So this seemed to be the only option we had. And while I'm sure people have tested exactly what kind of insulation is the best for sound absorption, I feel pretty confident with my choice because earlier I was speaking in the direction of, of the, the insulation pack just a few feet away from me, and I could tell how well it was actually catching the sound of my voice. So let's just say this is a really good sign starting out. Now, obviously we're gonna have to contain all that insulation with more than just a wooden frame around the sides. So on the back side, we have some poster board that I got at uh, an arts and crafts store. It's wide enough, but it's not quite long enough. So I'll actually have to end up cutting two pieces in order to cover the span of, of one entire panel, which shouldn't be too difficult. I was just planning to nail those to the back of the, uh, of the frame. And then we have the front. This is the part that you're actually going to see that's facing downward. And this is just some fabric that I got from a fabric store. I cut it to size. I think I did five by three feet just so we have some extra fabric to pull all the way around the frame and staple gun it from behind. But hold the phone. A uh, really quick drop and shot here, guys. Uh, this is recorded the following day, so I actually got a haircut since then. So sorry for the continuity error. I want to talk about price really quick. This project cost me a little bit more than I was initially anticipating. I thought it was going to be a little cheaper. It ended up being around $250 for all the materials to build two two by four foot panels. Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a little much. What really killed me was the insulation because you can't buy a small little pack of insulation. I had to buy this big honking hunk of insulation, which was like 75 bucks. And it's enough insulation for like, I don't know, I'm just rough estimating 10 to 15 panels. Definitely way overkill for, for the two panels that I'm building today. That is to say that if I were actually building a higher quantity of panels, it would significantly reduce the amount of money per panel because I already have all the insulation for, for so many panels. So bear that in mind though, if you're gonna attempt this yourself, make sure that you actually look up the prices of everything you need before you determine it's it's actually worth your, your time and money. Having said that, I'll put some links in the description below in case you're interested in some of the materials that we're using today. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start building this stuff, which means I'm gonna be a little tied up. So I'm gonna kick it over to future Kyle, who's already done this project and can explain to you exactly how I went about it step by step before of course giving you a final sound test of the before and after treatment. Alrighty, so full disclosure, this is more of a build log than a step-by-step -step tutorial. You're free to use this as a guide at your own risk, but I'm not a DIY expert unless we're talking about PCs of course. On that note, here's how I made my own acoustic panels. I started by finding and measuring out the studs in my ceiling, which happened to be a standard 16 inches apart. By doing this, I learned three things. A general idea of where I'd want my panels located, how far apart my ceiling hooks would be, and as a result, the distance between my D hooks. Then it was time to screw the wood planks together to make the frames for the panels. Bear in mind I don't have a huge assortment of tools or a proper outdoor workbench, so I had to work with what I had, which as you can see, isn't much. I started by using a drill bit roughly the same width as the threads of my wood screws in order to drill two clearance holes at the end of a four foot plank. Then, while holding a four foot and two foot plank together firmly, I used a smaller drill bit to make pilot holes into the two foot plank that lined up with the clearance holes of the four foot plank. Already I had found myself around more wood and screwing than a chair building contest. <laughs> Aren't advertiser friendly jokes the best? Once all the clearance holes and pilot holes were made, I used the wood screws to screw the wood together, shocker, and repeated the process for the other three corners. Then, for extra stability, I mounted a pair of right angle brackets on the inside of each corner. Mounting the D-hooks came next. I mounted two D-hooks on each two-foot side of the frame, making sure the hooks themselves were 16 inches apart, based on my stud measurements from earlier, and that they were equidistant from the edges of the frame. Afterwards, I was almost ready to fix the first piece of poster board to the D-hook side of the frame, which now serves as the back side of our panel. To keep the D-hooks from interfering with the poster board, I measured and cut two small pieces just big enough for the D-hooks to peer through. A second piece of poster board had to be measured, cut to size, and given the same two D-hook cutouts. Then I nailed the poster board to the frame, driving in the nails a few inches apart from each other. A final strip of duct tape was used to seal the two poster boards together. Next up was the insulation installation. 
I simply laid the material snugly inside the frame, cutting to size where appropriate in order to fill the space properly. I made sure none of the material was spilling out of the frame before covering the area with a piece of fabric that I pulled taut and wrapped around the backside before trimming the excess and staple gunning the crap out of the entire perimeter. It was super helpful having Wifey pull one side of the fabric tight while I held the other and went about my stapling frenzy. It's also worth noting that I bought the longest staples I could find at my local hardware store since they would need to penetrate the fabric, poster board, and wood for a proper hold. Some additional fabric needed to be cut out to make way for the D-hooks. This step might have been easier and turned out looking cleaner if we had actual fabric scissors. After some final bits of trimming and stapling, my first panel was complete! Building the second panel seemed to go much faster, as you might expect. With each completed panel, I measured the distance between all four D-hooks as a final confirmation where the ceiling hooks should go, then drilled the first hole in my ceiling stud. The hook screwed in easily, but I used a long sturdy object like a screwdriver to help turn it when it got too tight. This initial hook served as a reference point for the other three hooks, so it was just a matter of measuring, marking, drilling, and screwing. Somehow I still managed to fail that with flying colors and drill several unwanted holes into the ceiling. Guess I'll have to patch those later. The process was then repeated for the second panel, the only difference was having to measure how far apart it should be from the first one. In the end, I opted for a side-by-side -side arrangement to leave room in case I ever want to add a third panel down the line. Now upon my attempt at hanging the first panel, I realized a problematic oversight on my part. The lip of the ceiling hooks were too high for how short the D-hooks were, meaning the D-hook couldn't actually reach up and over the ceiling hook before the panel itself hit the bottom of the ceiling hook. So at the last minute I made one final run to the hardware store to pick up some S-hooks as a middleman between our two incompatible hooks. This lowered the panels an inch or so, but solved the issue perfectly. And there you have it, my first DIY acoustic panels. They look nice, floating ominously with the chance of collapsing on my head for certain death, but how do they work? I'll kick it back to Pass Kyle for a sound test. All right, you scallywags. Obviously, I'm in the newly treated room with the ceiling panels installed, and uh, I'm still using the built-in microphone on the RX100 Mark VII. This is the same mic that I was using at the intro. So uh, first, I'm going to play you a little clip from the intro so you can hear what it sounds like there. And then I'm going to say the same words, standing in the same, roughly the same position in the room, facing the same direction in the newly treated room, and you guys can hopefully hear a difference. Here you go. And as you can probably tell, there's still quite a bit of echo in this room because of all those untreated areas. So today, I'm gonna try to actually DIY my own acoustic panels. And as you can probably tell, there's still quite a bit of echo in this room because of all those untreated areas. So today, I'm gonna try to DIY my own acoustic panels. So you guys let me know how that sounds. Uh, we're gonna do one more test where I actually, I'm gonna speak into this corner of the room, which is the most untreated corner, I would say, of the room because it's wall, 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 and then this thing, which just echoes like crazy. So uh, let me go ahead and and say some words here. Hello, welcome back to the channel, guys. It should sound really terrible and echoey and reverby right now because I'm talking into a corner that has no soundproofing whatsoever. Now I'm gonna go over to this corner. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully this sounds a little bit less echoey and reverby now that I'm talking towards a bunch of foam panels as well as the DIY panels that I made yesterday. But there it is. Let me know what you guys uh, thought of the sound test. Personally, I think the ceiling panels do make a bit of difference, especially when I'm uh, talking more in this area of the room when I'm when they're directly above me. Um, however, there's still a lot of this room that's left untreated. We got some of the ceiling. Most of it, however, is widely untouched. So I'm gonna have to work on that in the next couple weeks here uh, to get the acoustics of this room exactly where I want them to be. At the very least, we did improve it a little bit today and uh, it's always fun, of course, building something yourself and then getting to use it right after. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please toss a like on it before you go. It helps a lot. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you real soon. And I will see you guys in the next video.